Please come a while, remain and play. The unicorns won't come today. The fairies and their virtued kin shall stay away. To paint my sin with ancient red and angry fire. Please come to me and linger, please. I do not mock, I dare not tease. Just bring with you an honest smile and share with me for all the while a love of life and true desire. The unicorns no longer guard the meadow just beyond my yard. They snort with shame and true disdain upon a hope of ages pain and brand me by their pride a liar. Your smile is sacred to me. Would that a chalice of communion wine hold half the redemptive power of your kiss. For faith is a turbulent dream in this age, this age in which your grace in saving me from the false religions of self-cut idols of balsa and tin and cheap velour. Pure runs the water tested by fires, caught and contained and feeding, seeding the clouds with the essence of life. For you are the fire, and the rain, and the sun, and the clouds, and the sky. And your smile is sacred to me. I crave a cup, a bowl, a mug of your heart steel, unsheathed before by mortal or god, for rage or lust of things both unneeded and forever unreal. It is the quintessence and the dust. Dreams do not stand before you and call the blade. Dreams do not walk or breathe or love you as I do and can and will if given just a moment's shade from the moon of pain and the stars that lie. My words shall be eternal. Syntax monuments of you 
beneath the tread of centuries, stone shall fall, paint peel, music rise to ears long deaf. But now, and from this night on, you are immortal. Aphrodite does not barter her beauty for hollow promise. Wisdom girds glib eloquences in a veil of truth, the sooth that soothes us like the blood of aloe cut fresh from a garden where we swore we would never walk again. Jasmine. A thought slides like electric lovers across a sea of tranquility where the dust is kicked skyward by the blue flames and boots of the explorers. I awaken from the dream, sightless, paralyzed, the cold catalepsy illustrating the fear of death I had forgotten. But there is an incandescence in the darkness, and for once I sink back to sleep, aware of God, and cognizant of the pattern in the tapestry as I await Rome, content that Damascus was no illusion this time. My heart blossoms and the petals are fragrant like the wrists of a mistress, stained and ordained with a perfume prepared to meet the expectations of a lover. My heart blossoms and the colors explode in the spectrum of ancient light caught at the far end of the universe, perceived new but from the beginning, what always was. My heart blossoms, and all the thorns melt and run into nothingness. For pain is not regent in a world where there are the petals and fragrance of your lips, ripe with emotion and hope. Apollo pales and sails across a sky of colors intricate, slate gray and a blue like the eyes of Aphrodite, impregnating memory with a starting point for blending, bending the spectrum into greens of life and the violets of passion. And in these times, we are the love gods of a forgotten religion. Mythic mysteries that stir the slip of idols 
to be cast for a past we abruptly dropped, like a half-perfected statue of a cat goddess. Modesty growing moss on stones that slide deep into the silence. They are recalled, they and their kin, for they left their stones, their temples, their tales of heroes and heroics. Permanent subtext for the muscles of imagination, flexed in a show of strength, the length of thought caught not on the brambles of distraction. With incantated prayers, we are the love gods of a forgotten religion. Chants and cants and my how we prance without pants in the trance of our blood chemistry going to alchemy in the laboratory of evolution. Our hormonocentric heresies forsworn for the priests of a fed hunger. We shall not leave such Olympian statuary. Nary clue will endure that with motives pure and thoughts unsure, we cured Gordius of the intricacies of logical whim. The sword of Alexander, ample answer to the recent regent riddles of barren paramours. For on these shores, we are the love gods of a forgotten religion. Knowing that, in the eyes of the romantic, a pigeon is a dove, pure and perfect sacrifice for the price of kisses, bartered for blessings, spread in a holy oil of the skin, shared in a heated suspension. Freya passes and serenades of Raja unrecorded. Paper faded and temperaments jaded in the ironic skepticism of youth and truth, obscured by desire, fire to a pyre of inconvenient hopes that rope us in a bound harness of caresses, cauterizing our bleeding, needy hearts. We are. We are. We are. We are love gods of a forgotten religion. The idols are left as curiosity for tourists yet unborn, shorn of tableau like a Nazarite's hair, heir to the wonderment of children and lovers, innocence seeking answers that they alone can understand and cherish. The sound of soft fingertips across the strings of a lute, strumming the memories, humming the melody of life, and I am lost in the possibilities of your presence. Pleasant, peasant prayers that lead to the summit of the mountain in the distance where legends reign. Kings cannot know this brandy wine. Princes pass perplexed, and all the bishops seem ignorant of the nature of God when their ignorance of the crux of creation is displayed, paraded in the sudden dance of a smiling child by the fire. And I am lost in the reverent reveries of this revelation. Play for me that melody, the one you tried to teach me, the one you tried to reach me with when I despaired of lost love, and the angels and fairies all seemed annoying pinpoints that pricked and sticked and stole the moment that was mine, and you came for me, barefoot and arrogant, like a poet. And the fires swam into the sky, and I, I was reborn, torn to pieces and reassembled 
like a patchwork skirt to brush your bare legs in the summer heat and to defeat the angry winds that would come down from the mountains mounting the horses of hoarfrost to charge your charms. I live now in more than just abstract recollections of a score of forgetful lovers who would not give me second thought were it not for the trinkets of my words that they wear as bright badges as they tell their tales of the pale blue moon of memory. And they don't wear the patchwork skirt of my love or play the lute. Tread softly on the carpets of my soul, before no other have they been laid so open, and were they to be abused, surely I would die. Weave carefully your dreams to make me whole, fashion them discreetly, do not parade my love for you like some new toy before every eye. Carve my flesh with blades of trust. Fear not my death, for I am made strong by the love I sense in you, a love I know we share. Bury me not beneath time's dust, for memory lies, and I will live long and at peace within the world as only lovers may dare. A lonely tale is bound to wind around a spindle point to make of us a metaphor to an avatars to anoint and there are those who will relate our falls and victories and sell our shells and necklaces declared to cure disease for we owe debt to memory and those who bear the art the acolytes of ancient nights, we melted in the dark. We cannot burn at this degree and not outshine, at least, the dimmer stars, if not the moon, and sundry sun's relief. If you dare not to be a mold for dreams of those unborn, then tip your hat and hand and flee this pilgrim, bent and worn. For we owe debt to memory and those who bear the art, the acolytes of ancient nights, we melted in the dark. A kiss is an act of courage purging us of our inhibitions, acknowledging truths we dare not face, but will be glad to embrace when the lights are off, and we no longer fear the intimacy of a delicate crush of lips, sealing words in and letting emotions out in a gout of flame and light that burns our eyes so much that we must shut them to guard against being blinded by the luminosity of the soft membranes that are even now touching to save our souls from our own demons. Heroic acts begin with a kiss.